Item number SCP-2701 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures A listening post has been established outside the former State Penitentiary to monitor SCP-2701. Video surveillance is established throughout Cell Block 15, with pre-existing locking mechanisms enabled to limit the mobility of any released subjects. One security guard equipped with full body restraints is to be present on site at all times. SCP-2701 is cell 667 in the former State Penitentiary located in Pennsylvania. The cell is currently in a state of extreme disrepair. Contents are limited to a toilet and bed of expected make and construction prior to 1840. Disassembly of the door and fixtures has revealed no unusual features or components. Mass spectrometry of the cell materials are all consistent with expected composition except for trace amounts of cadmium selenide located along the door frame. A clipboard containing forms marked as intake is located 0.8 meters to the left of the entrance to SCP-2701. There are currently Names written on the forms with release dates between June 17, 2000 and December 25, 33. Anomalous effects manifest when a single human subject is fully locked with an SCP-2701. His or her name is written on the intake list under the heading Name, and a day, month, and year are written on the release date. Thirteen seconds after these conditions have been met, the subject will disappear. Attempts to visually surveil an activation event have consistently met with failure, as recording equipment placed inside or outside of the cell produce only static or blank images during the 13-second period leading up to disappearance. Researchers observing an event have noted the sound of confined wind and additional unidentified noises. See Experimental Trial 2701-13 audio log, emanating from within the cell immediately before activation. No abnormal variations in air pressure have been detected during these periods. At 12 am on the written date, the cell door automatically closes and locks via an unknown mechanism. Once cell closure is complete, the subject will reappear with an SCP-2701. Initial experiments proved inconclusive due to concurrent behavioral disorders exhibited by subjects post-reappearance. Typical psychosis included dementia, nyctophobia, photophobia, sedatophobia, acousticophobia, claustrophobia, agoraphobia, haphophobia, catatonia, and anorexia. Dissected subjects showed no evidence of physical change, including aging during an activation event. Subsequent short-duration trials revealed that subjects who undergo an activation event experience a state of complete sensory deprivation while fully conscious. For the duration of the disappearance period, a subject will perceive time at a significantly dilated rate, estimated to be between 300 and 400 times the magnitude. Mental trauma in subjects accrues rapidly while under the effect of 2701. Staff psychologists theorize that in the absence of any outside stimulation, a subject's mind breaks down rational thought structures in an effort to mitigate stress, resulting in either cognitive shutdown or increasingly frenzied mania. Subjects experiencing an event of greater than two hours, subjective time estimate 25 to 33 days, typically exhibit complete psychological breakdown. Interview I-2701-1-R-7 Interviewed D-77391, Hispanic male, 34 years of age, imprisoned for murder, selected for trials due to experience with solitary confinement. Interviewer Dr. Simon Forward D-77391 underwent a 15-minute activation event. Interview was conducted six hours after D-77391 was retrieved from SCP-2701. Compared to previous subjects, D-77391 showed significantly less cognitive degeneration and psychosis post-trial. Begin Log 
Please describe your experience while affected by SCP-2701. Please, please, don't make me go back there. D-77391, your cooperation in post-trial interviews is not voluntary. Describe your experience while affected by SCP-2701. It was hell. I was in hell. Escort D-77391 back to SCP-2701 for a second. No, wait, wait, wait. I was trying to tell you. There's nothing in there. It's a void. It's darkness and silence and… and emptiness. Please clarify. D-77391 pauses to compose himself. I could think. That much didn't change. It's just that thinking was all I could do. I couldn't see anything, hear anything, even feel anything. I couldn't sleep. I didn't breathe. I didn't think I even had a body. Just my thoughts and memories and… nothingness. You were fully aware then? I was aware of time. I didn't know how long. When it would stop. I tried to grasp… something. Tried to scream. If not for what that doc told me when he was putting me inside, I'm sure I would have lost my mind. Which doctor was that? Blonde, tall, with glasses? Ah yes, what did doctor… tell you? D-77391 appears unsettled and begins to slowly rock in his chair. He said that no matter what I felt, I was going to come back. He told me I wasn't going to be in there forever. I think we're about done here. Is there anything else you would like to add? How long was I inside? Fifteen minutes. Wait. What? You experienced a fifteen-minute event. D-77391 becomes visibly distressed. No, 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 that's not possible. I was gone for weeks. 77391, you are dismissed. No, it can't be true. The, the dark had me. <clears throat> Please return 77391 to his cell. This interview is over. No, 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 not alone again, please. At this time, D-77391 begins sobbing and refuses to respond further. Medical personnel arrive to sedate and transport the subject back to the D-Class holding area. D-77391 was terminated 28 hours later after a suicide attempt resulted in critical anoxic brain injury. Doctor was reassigned to Site-38 following a six-month suspension for violation of experimental protocols. And log. Addendum. SCP-2701 first came to the attention of the Foundation in 1970 following the discovery of exculpatory evidence in the case of a repeat felon serving a life sentence at State Penitentiary. The public defender assigned to the case sought to arrange a meeting with his client to discuss terms of release, but was repeatedly rebuffed by the prison warden, Samuel Deckard. When Mr. Deckard offered the attorney a substantial monetary sum to cease attempting to contact his client, the lawyer sought assistance from local authorities, who were also refused access by Mr. Deckard. A local SWAT unit was deployed and gained entry to the facility by force. Despite an expected inmate population of 137 long-term prisoners, investigators found no indication of human life and the facility in serious disrepair. The only inhabitant located was Mr. Deckard who surrendered to police without incident. Evidence found on-site revealed that he had taken up long-term residence within the prison administrative offices. When questioned about the status and location of the missing inmates, Mr. Deckard willingly explained that he had placed all of them within cell 667 and explained the activation procedure in detail. Records on-site indicated that Mr. Deckard had been using prison funds to pay bribes to inspectors, defense attorneys, and former staff to prevent inquiry. An agent embedded with Philadelphia's 9th Police District alerted Foundation Command and initiated isolation procedures. Interview I-2701-P-1 Interviewed Samuel Deckard, Caucasian male, 57 years of age, Chief Administrative Official of State Penitentiary. Interviewer Agent Forward Interview was conducted as part of standard intake procedures upon Mr. Deckard being brought into Foundation custody. Begin log. 1970 I've reviewed the release record from up until the present. It seems that was the last month a prisoner was released from State. Since you're the type that does your homework, I'm sure you figured out why. Your daughter, Emily. Was it your intention to use SCP-2701 on 
I got to look him in the eyes once, right after the trial. Ever seen the face of a true monster, son? I don't believe so, no. It's what he was. I looked him in the eyes and saw a man who chose to be a beast. I wanted to see him rot in the deepest, darkest hole I could find. You know how you break an animal? No, Mr. Deckard. You take away its hope. Put it in a corner and block every exit. Let the dread seep in. Everything fears death. Break a creature and it fears life even more. And when… Died in custody? Mr. Deckard stares intently at Agent… Several seconds before speaking. I had meant it for him, but when he got away, I couldn't look at the animals that surrounded me anymore. I started to get nauseated even by the thought of them. That's when I sent the guards home and started moving the convicts. You placed all of the prisoners into cell 667 by yourself? Yes. How long did it take you? It went quickly at first. They thought it was a lockdown. It was too early for any of them to notice that the others weren't coming back. Murderers, brutes, and predators, every one of them. But only a handful of balked when I took them to 667. They were the first few I put away bloody. What do you mean? The shock prod wasn't enough, and I had to use the pipe. The rest caught on quickly. They realized that the prison was getting emptier, quieter. They saw that I took men away and never brought anyone back. I was only feeding them every few days, so they were angry but starvation hasn't yet taken a toll on their strength. There were a couple of weeks of rough work. Everyone I took was a fight. I even got tagged a few times. Mr. Deckard unbuttons his shirt. He indicates four two to three centimeter long scars located on his right side and lower abdomen. Did you seek medical attention? No. I made it to the infirmary to stitch them closed. But after that I slowed down. I became more selective about who I pulled out. I watched fear creep its way through each block. When I distributed food I would look for the ones that pleaded and begged or just huddled in the corner of their cell. They went away crying and pissing themselves but weren't much of a struggle. Were there any more incidents? Only a few. So long as I was patient, the hunger and filth and terror would cut them down before I came for them. A few took the coward's way out, but I left the bodies as a warning. What do you mean by warning? They had to know that the only way out was by my hand. It was already putrid inside, and the walk to Block 15 had long since been stained by all the men I dragged there. The few that still tried to fight crumpled after the first blow to the head. There wasn't much life left in them at that point. And the time frame? Three months and six days until I finished. Was the last. He didn't say a word. Didn't even look at me. One last question, Mr. Deckard. How did you create SCP-2701? Oh, I didn't create it, son. I had help. Please explain. Let's just say that hate and grief are a currency to some. When I was willing to pay the price, help found me.